Tech Cocktail Conversations, candid insights from startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders from around the globe. So Downtown Project is a separate company that's privately funded and uh, part of the reason why it's privately funded and separate from Zappos is so that we don't have to worry about short-term ROI. Instead, we can focus on, uh, we call it ROC, Return on Community, and it's a $350 million budget and uh, it's roughly divided up into a few different areas. We have $50 million allocated to investing in small businesses that help build a sense of neighborhood and community. Uh, 50 million to invest into tech startup companies, 50 million into education and the arts, including a partnership with Teach for America, and then about 200 million is allocated to for real estate investments. And the goal is to help create a place where you have everything you need to live, work, play within walking distance, and to make downtown Vegas the most community-focused large city in the world, and probably the place you would least expect. We're actually very anti-master planning, and so it's not us coming in and saying, oh, we want to build the city like this, and we would think of it really more as helping people accelerate their passions and their dreams. And so uh, we're actually in my apartment right now, and behind me, around the corner, there's a wall with all these post-it notes, and as people come through, you basically ask them, what do you want in your dream neighborhood? And people might say, oh, a dog park, or a bakery, or uh, or a certain type of restaurant. And you know, based on the feedback we get, then those are the types of things that we look to fund. We, we want to fund projects that help build community that are owner-operated and the owner is super passionate about it. We, we've had some people say, oh, there's been this uh, restaurant concept that I've seen in these seven other cities, so you should have one here as well. And those we aren't really that interested in because we don't want to be eighth. We, we want to be first or unique or best. For the past seven years or so, we've actually been looking to find a place where we can house all of our Zappos employees under one roof. And right now we're in Henderson, which is a suburb of Vegas, and split amongst three different buildings. And it was actually surprisingly hard to find a place where we could put everyone in a single building and have enough land to expand upon. And then we found out the city was moving out of Las Vegas City Hall, and, and they actually literally just moved out of the old city hall a few months ago, and right now we're undergoing the construction process of the insides. And uh, and so that really was what led us to really start thinking, what is it that we want to have in a campus? And originally we thought, oh, let's build a campus like Nike or Google or Apple that have these amazing campuses for employees. But as we started thinking about it more, we realized that they're great for employees, but they're actually very insular and don't really integrate or, or uh, contribute to the community around them. And so we thought instead of just building a campus for ourselves, let's instead kind of take an approach like NYU where the city blends in with the campus and you don't really know where one begins and the other ends. And rather than just invest in ourselves, let's invest in the community and the ecosystem. And in the long run, that's going to help us attract and retain more employees. So there's been actually a great book called Triumph of the City, written by a Harvard economics professor, and he uh, studied cities from all different time periods, Rome, New York, Detroit, and looked at why some thrived and some didn't. And one of the interesting findings from the book is that every time the size of a city doubles, productivity or innovation for residents increases by 15%, whereas with companies as they get bigger productivity per employee it generally goes down. So from the Zappos perspective, partly it's how do we avoid that fate? And we think the answer is by creating this weird hybrid between a corporation and city and community that's never really been done before in the way that we're approaching it. And uh, and so a lot of the density stuff actually is just centered around thinking how do we accelerate serendipity? How do we accelerate collisions? Because most uh, research has shown that most innovation actually happens from something outside your industry being applied to your own, and those are the results of random conversations at bars or coffee shops, and just when you when you have collisions with, with people. And we've actually unknowingly a lot of the stuff that we were have been doing at Zappos just within our offices over the years that have, is actually something that can be applied to the city as well. So, for example, at Zappos in the building I work in. 
we actually lock all of the doors, even though the back door is closer to the parking lot, and we force employees to go through the front door, uh, even though it's more inconvenient, because that will increase the number of collisions. We also have density in terms of, I think the average density in the United States, if you look at office square footage per employee, is about two or 300 square feet per employee. And in Henderson, our current offices, we're at 120 square feet per employee. And for our future campus, we're targeting sub 100 square feet per employee. And part of that is being driven by the research that has shown that when someone sits twice as far away from you in an office environment, you don't see them half as often. You see them half as often squared. So a quarter as often works kind of like the inverse uh, square gravity law. And so very similar analogous things on a city level as people are walking on the streets. We want to make sure that the activity, there's a density in activity and energy and so on. Yeah, we actually have some renderings over here uh, of what the container park will look like and it's basically taking over half of the city block and there'll be uh, lots of different food and beverage options there like uh, beer and sausage garden, a uh, wine and cheese place, a Mexican place, a barbecue place, and then there's also different retailers there. Uh, and the idea is to have it be very kid friendly. There's actually, uh, in the center, we want to create almost like a kid's paradise where there's rock climbing and water features and stuff for them to climb on and so on. And the idea is the kids can be playing in this safe, contained place while the parents are actually out in the food and beverage area, but can keep an eye on their kids. And also, uh, there's, there'll be a lawn and a stage, and so they can watch the band. And so uh, it's a place where kids are hopefully begging their parents to go to every weekend, and the parents enjoy being able to hang out with, with the other adults as well. You know, I come from a tech background, and so I'm used to the idea of you can go from idea to launch in 24 hours if, if, if you have enough Red Bulls. And here, anything involving physical stuff just takes longer and there's permitting process. And you know, in a lot of cases, you actually have to build something. And, you, and so you know, I guess it takes a lot more patience to, to do this. I think the most surprising thing for me is uh, is just how interested people that don't live in Vegas are about this project. And we've seen people come stay here with us at the Ogden because we have a bunch of furnished apartments that are set up as free hotel rooms for visitors. And they come once out of curiosity, but then they're back two or three months later and they keep coming back. Partly, I think, out of curiosity to see what's happened, but then also because every time they come, they're amongst a cohort of people that are also visiting, and so they get to meet interesting people along the way, and we've started doing the speaker series, and it's almost like we're throwing a mini TED conference, but every single week now. And, and so I think the outside interest has been, been really surprising and not something that I would have expected a year ago. Mm -hmm.